trumpet flutist first visited Korea in 2008 for professorship for flute at the German School of Music Weimar. A joint university faculty of the Franz Liszt School of Music Weimar and Gangnam University in Korea. The Swiss flutist reinterpreted the original soundtracks from Korean TV productions into flute pieces and always challenges himself to new outlets. Okay, I came to Korea about nine years ago and I really felt that in these nine years I did a lot of work and a lot of concerts, but I want to be a little bit more close or find out a little bit more about the Korean culture and about the Korean people. Um, so I was actually starting to watch the Korean dramas and I felt that when I, when I watched these kind of very light um, uh, TV dramas that I learned a lot about the, the daily culture and actually many issues or questions I had in daily Korean life I kind of found the answer why people behave in this situation this way or in another situation this way so it actually brought me quite closer to the Korean culture. Let us sit down with Swiss flutist Philip Bunt and learn more about his love for Korea and the flute on Heart to Heart. Today's guest has captivated audiences around the world with the warmth of his tone paired with his vast dynamic expressiveness. Uh, joining us today is Swiss flutist Philip Junt. Hello and welcome to Heart to Heart. Hello Jennifer. Hello. Hello all the viewers from Heart to Heart. I'm excited to be back here. Okay, so you are, you just said, back here at Arirang. I understand that you have appeared on one of our shows uh, quite, this was last year? I think it was two years, two ago. years ago. A different show. Though. Yes, it was a different yeah. show. Now, I understand that uh, you have collaborated with many international musicians and orchestras and performed in all corners of the world. Um, but your recent performance gave a reinterpretation of something quite interesting, uh, original soundtracks of Korean TV dramas. So I would like to ask you about the audience's response, how people reacted, and how you came to actually um, you know, focus your music on these reinterpretations of original soundtracks. About one year ago, mm -hmm. um, I started together with a, a friend of mine, um, a German composer, yes. to rearrange um, 15 songs from Korean, drama, uh, uh, Korean dramas mm -hmm. for flute and orchestra. And uh, we tried it for the first time about one month ago in mm -hmm. LGR Toll here in Seoul. And, uh, but before that, I have tried a couple of them as encore pieces before. Ah. So I played Mozart Concerto and uh -huh. maybe um, so, some OST songs mm -hmm. as encore. And the reaction of the audience, I think, was, was quite interesting. Uh -huh. That uh, um, First of all, it was quite interesting which songs um, were, were really good with the audience ah. and other songs were not. And it's really different where I played it. So for oh, example, in Korea, uh -huh. um, people just started singing along with certain songs. Mm -hmm. And in, in uh, Europe, it was a little bit other songs which, which they liked than here. You obviously have rearranged many, many of these soundtracks, but of course, it must have been very difficult to select these pieces because there are many popular uh, soundtracks, original soundtracks of uh, Korean TV dramas. So how did you make such selections? And um, I guess, what did you keep in mind? What was in your mind when you were rearranging these pieces? Um, it actually reminded me on the work I did about three years ago when I arranged Brahms songs. Uh -huh. Um, for flute and piano, and I did actually the exactly same process now with the OST songs. Right. I just basically listened to about 1,000 songs, mm. and my first criteria was just which one I like immediately, oh. just which one I like listening. So that's obviously my first criteria. Mm -hmm. 
but then there's still a couple of hundreds left. Yes. <laughs> um, and then there's things like which one works on flute um, to have a healthy mix, which ones really works in a more classical style, because mm. some of them are really more absolute pop music and they maybe don't work so much. You know. right. And then really the construction of a piece. I mean, certain pieces have a really good build up that they have a, a good beginning, a good middle part, a good ending. Mm -hmm. Some pe pieces just have a good melody and not much else. Mm -hmm. And so I, I looked at it from different aspects. And then I also had a lot of advice from, from my composer friend who did it with me, Marco Hertenstein, mm -hmm. who just looked at it in a more you know, composing way. And we ended up with about 30 pieces which we really like, uh -huh. and uh, we, as we are doing a CD very soon, we only can take 50, and so that was mm -hmm. the most difficult process to right. cut it down from 30 to 50. Uh -huh. Does it have a connection with which TV drama was popular, or was it more on the songs? I'm not quite sure whether, here just some songs are extremely popular mm -hmm. because the shows are popular, yes. but sometimes there's not so popular shows with really good songs too, mm -hmm. which people just didn't know yet. So, but honestly, I don't think that was the case. I think that normally mm -hmm. um, here, the perception of these songs is a little bit more in the direction of popular music. Mm. And we tried it to bring it a little bit more to classical ah. music. So our major discussion was usually that we wanted to have it really in a classical setting and transform these pieces into a classical mm -hmm. setting. And the Korean perception was more, if you do OST, do OST, don't try to do classical music out of I it. See. And so that's, so we try to find a healthy mix mm -hmm. uh, between the two. Okay, so I guess we'll, we can expect a mix, a combination of both, a bit more classical and a bit more pop, I yeah, guess. Yeah, uh -huh. we have both in it, yeah. Interesting. Now, we do have a flute sitting right in front of us. It is, of course, the flute that you have brought with you. Um, I would love to actually have the opportunity to hear you play a piece for us here in the studio. So to help our viewers get a better understanding of your music and a feel of what the original soundtracks, how they have been rearranged, could you possibly play something for us? Sure. Okay. I will play uh, a short melody. Yes. Um, that actually was one of the ones which we disagreed a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I would like to play it. Okay. Um, we will do it with flute and quite big orchestra um, because it is a piece with a lot of rhythm and mm. bass and drums. And we will basically take these rhythms and drums into the symphony orchestra. It's from, it's so difficult to spell, Jung yes. Leung in Narisha, so six Jung. flying dragons. Okay, there you go, Jung Leung in Narisha. <laughs> Now, we did briefly talk about the album that will be released. Will this song be included? Yes, is it included? yes. So yes. this is what you kind of disagreed upon, but you have decided to include it in the album? Well, with this kind of song, we didn't disagree on putting it on. It's ah. really always a, a musical question. This is a kind of a pop song, and it needs the bomb, mm. the big drums and the percussion. And we are, we are applying these percussion elements into the bass, like the celli, the double bass, mm -hmm. basically the classical instruments. And so it's always a question about how much you want to play these pieces classical or ah. how much you really want the pop music. I see. And that's a fine line. Uh -huh. So how much progress uh, have you made so far? We will do the recording in autumn mm. in Switzerland with mm -hmm. one of the major Swiss orchestras. And we have some really fantastic 
call soloists uh -huh. because I really wanted this CD not only to be flute and orchestra, mm -hmm. but flute clarinet orchestra, flute violin orchestra, so different soloists with mm -hmm. orchestra. Um, just to give it more color and, and to also include some of my friends which have been in Korea uh -huh. playing concerts together. Yes, uh -huh. so when uh, can we expect to, I guess, uh, see the release of this album? I guess the release will be spring next year. Spring? Oh, we have to wait too long. Yes, it always oh. takes so much time. <laughs> I know, so long. Uh, you will be starting in autumn, but it will be spring of next year. Until it's for finished. Us to yeah. finally get yeah. the chance to purchase it. Okay, yes, we'll keep that in mind. Flutist Philip Pund dominates the stage with his rich repertoires and vast musicality. He tries unique performances and arrangements with songs, violin pieces, and rearrangements of drama soundtracks. Let us now hear about his diverse endeavors. understand that you not only play the flute but you actually started playing the violin at a much younger age it was at seven yes and then um, your first encounter with the flute was at age I did my study I did my homework 12, 12. yes very good <laughs> um, and you studied the flute as well as economics exactly yes. so you studied economics at Harvard was that and in Munich, uh -huh. Munich University. so could you tell us about this and then so so you studied the flute as well as economics, and here you are, a flutist. So could you yes. tell us about that path? Well, I started, as you said, as a violin student. It's funny that still now, if I think of music, I kind of think it in a, in a violin oh. way. Because violin is more graphic. It's really, it has a yes. place, everything has its place. Flute is just, you know, clicking keys, mm. and <laughs> of course your body has to do, has to take the work. Um, then I started playing flute when I was 12, and I, I did that quite intensively when I was young. Mm -hmm. So since I was 13, I really played concerts every week. Wow. So I was very early age <gasps> playing a lot. That's also one of the reasons um, I do these kind of OST mm. things. I started looking right and left quite early. So at the age of 18 already, I did a lot of contemporary music. Yes. I played Balkan music. I played music with native people from Australia, mm. from Canada. So I always wanted to look right and left and uh -huh. come back to classical music, mm -hmm. such as the OST, OST program. Yes. Um, I worked very hard when I was a kid, but when I started university, mm -hmm. I kind of felt that I, I need to do other things in life too. Oh, just kind of get away or <laughs> kind of step away, maybe? No, no, not stepping away mm -hmm. really, but, but for Take one or break. two years, uh, you know, I studied flute mm -hmm. and I did my, my work, but I think I got a little bit lazy, I went out a lot, I, I wanted to enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I felt I need a little bit more structure in my life mm -hmm. again, and economics is something I, I always was interested in, you know, uh, uh, about something for my brain, not mm -hmm. only playing the flute. So I, I more or less, out of a hobby, just started studying economics, parallel to flute. Uh -huh. So I inscribed in the university and then first in Munich, later in, in America. I see. And I think it helped me a lot to get back on track mm -hmm. from a thinking way. Oh, wow. Not only in daily life, mm -hmm. but only as an approach to music. Economics is something which helps you to analyze things. If you have a huge amount of information, mm -hmm. what economics does is to you know, make you focus on what's the goal, what's the purpose, oh, what's I the reason. See. And I think in music that helps too. I'm, I'm someone who really likes to analyze my music. Uh -huh. I, uh, if I play Telemann or if I play Bach, I analyze every, every bit of harmony, every note, every mm -hmm. history of the composer. I really like to know what I'm doing and then I can be free. Mm -hmm. I believe that when you know a lot, when you analyze a lot, it makes you being absolutely free and, and you can basically be spontaneous, which mm -hmm. you cannot if you don't know. So I, I was going to ask you if uh, you know your studies in economics, your studies at Harvard actually helped you in any way or, or influenced your music, and there's the answer. I get that <laughs> asked quite a lot, and I think mm -hmm. it has two sides for me. It is a little bit dangerous to have two things doing uh -huh. at the same time. Mm. Um, 
I've seen other kids in Korea who, who ask me about this, mm -hmm. wh whether they should do, you know, flute and something else. Ah. And it is dangerous because if you, if you have one thing you really want to do, mm -hmm. you give everything in your life to this. Now suddenly you have a second one and you can use it as excuse, both of them for the other one, ah. not to give 100%. Uh -huh. And that is a little bit dangerous thing. That's true. But on the other hand, I have to say that in the time when I studied economics, mm -hmm. I practice flute the most. Oh, is that <laughs> yeah, right? It really motivated me a lot to practice. It, uh -huh. it was a, because it's such a different thing. Mm -hmm. It gives you break, one for the other. And it really motivated me, one for the other, to work mm. a lot. I read somewhere that uh, you mentioned something about wanting to, uh, this is of course when it comes to playing uh, flute, you would like to play the flute as you would the violin. Yeah. And. I was wondering what that really meant, the meaning behind that. In the tradition of flute, flute is a quite weak instrument mm. um, because the old instruments were softer and not so flexible in sound. About 100 years ago, maybe 140 years ago, a little bit longer, um, Theobald Böhm invited this system of flute with keys, mm -hmm. um, which also has been adapted for clarinet, for oboe, for, for, for saxophone, for other instruments. And this basically changed the way flute can be played. Mm -hmm. It made the flute being more powerful, more, more grand, more flexible. But the music written, mm -hmm. of course, has not changed. The music written is still uh, right. quite soft, quite, quite uh -huh. gentle music. In uh, my opinion, the flute playing has kind of sticked mm. with this uh, more sensitive, more, more soft playing. And in my opinion, or what my goal is, and that's something Sir James Galway did, did first, in my opinion. He really played the flute like a, like a violin, like a cello, mm -hmm. um, for the first time. In my own style, I would like to also do s something like this. Mm -hmm. I really want to play the flute like I play the violin, like the music I hear. And I, I think it was violin, I want to play it with a flute like this. That means that I would play, be play more powerful, uh -huh. more colorful. Right but also very soft, mm -hmm. that I just have more, more tools mm -mm -mm. to do the music I want to do. Yes, I, I think I understand, because as you said, when people think of the flute, um, they would almost automatically, or most people would think, a very soft, very sensitive sound, uh, whereas the violin, of course, may have a stronger, a more powerful sound. So that's, hmm, I see. The Kunja Music Festival is bound to cool all of its visitors on hot summer nights. Internationally renowned flutists participate in this festival, which has now become an event for musical exchanges. Philip Junt was the artistic director of this music festival right from the beginning. This is why this music festival is all the more special to him. Now, um, should we talk about the Kunjiam uh, Woodwind Festival? It yes. is yes, Kunjiam Woodwind Festival. So uh, you did mention that you uh, are very excited for this uh, festival. It is a music festival. It is the first year actually. Um, it'll commence on the eighth of August. So could you tell us about two thousand eighteen Kunjiam Woodwind Festival? Yes, I will begin with the flute festival. Uh -huh. um, my very good friend and partner, uh, partner for this uh, festival, mm -hmm. the director of Gonja Music Festival, yes. uh, Suyan Peck, and me as artist director, mm -hmm. we founded a flute festival four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, this became by now really one of the major flute festivals in, in Asia. Mm -hmm. It's quite a big and I think interesting flute event, which we do every year in February for uh -huh. one week. And because this was quite successful and going well, we decided to start a woodwind festival. Mm. Now, I think that woodwind in Korea is not very developed yet. Actually, I have to say, to be fair, in the whole world, the woodwind music is a little bit a niche mm. because chamber music is a lot of string players and piano players, yes. but not so much woodwind players. And our idea was really to promote the woodwind music. Mm. That's flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon and horn. Mm -hmm. So the woodwind, five woodwind instruments. So what we do on August 8, here across the street in Yeseloi Chandan, yes, in Seoul Art, Center, Seoul Art Center, we will have the opening concert mm -hmm. of our first woodwind festival, where we have um, 
guests from uh, Berlin Philharmonic, from Dresden Staatsopera, from mm -hmm. Munich Philharmonic, from so from European uh, major orchestras yes. come here and play together with some great Korean artists. Mm -hmm. um, and after this, we will be joined by about 70 Korean students. Mm -hmm. And we will do a festival for one week together right. where the students have lessons, but also where the students play together with the European guests, mm -hmm. chamber music. Oh, wow. And we think that's quite a unique uh, opportunity yes. for young kids to play woodwind quintet. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the, the horn player from Berlin Philharmonic, he will play woodwind quintet with some students from here. That's amazing. And wow. they also will play concerts. We have daily concerts. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, we're quite excited for this for this first, first project. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the location, the venue, um, I heard that it's, it's a very beautiful spot as well. Yes, it's yes, absolutely it's amazing. gorgeous. It's uh -huh. about maybe 40 minutes um, outside of the city. Yes. A beautiful resort in the, in the nature, mm -hmm. the Goncham Valley. We call yes. it the valley. Uh, the valley. <laughs> yes, I could just imagine the beauty of nature along with the, the beautiful sounds of music. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited for you. Uh, so I, I hope many of our viewers will have the chance to check it out. So it's going to begin on the 9th, I believe, then at the Kunjian Valley. Yes. For one week. Yes, exactly. Okay. So on the 8th is the yes. concert and uh -huh. 9th is the festival. I see. Now, you have just mentioned that you, um, you know, try to promote music. And you're, of course, trying to uh, promote Korean artistic contents in Europe as well. Is there a special reason behind this? Well, I think that um, in the last years, a lot of international artists come to Korea mm -hmm. to play concerts. A lot of orchestras come here. Um, and that was because probably in the last 20 or 30 years, there was just more, you know, famous or prestigious artists mm. fr from, from Europe who mm -hmm. toured the world. Um, and in my perception, that really has changed. I think that in Korea, there is just a huge amount of fantastic players, mm. not only um, from the instrument side, but also from the emotion, from the from the stage presence side. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the level of, of uh, music making in Korea is really one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it is not justified that only the European musicians come here. I think the, the Korean musicians should get a chance to play more in Europe. Um, now for, that's from the playing side, from the composing side, of course, Korea doesn't have the long tradition of classical music. It's right. not originally yes. their music. But Korea has actually two things which I really admire. They have mm -hmm. a fantastic scene of contemporary music. There are so many con uh, Korean contemporary composers which, which write music in a very high level. And they're not ever played. They're not played very often. And the other thing, and that's my OST project, I think that when it comes to a little bit more popular music, mm -hmm. that the level of music here is much higher than the same kind of music which I see in Europe. I see. Um, in America, it's, it's very high level too, so I would compare the Korean one more mm -hmm. to the American level. Mm -hmm. But especially in Europe, we don't have this kind of high quality popular music, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really would like to, you know, to do this OST project in Europe mm -hmm. and basically influence the other direction right. of, uh -huh. of music flow. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and my last question is about the kind of artist or musician you hope to be remembered as? I think every artist uh -huh. should, and not so many artists in my opinion are. Um, in German we say ein Suchender, mm -hmm. so a person who is looking for something. Mm. So I want to stay looking for things I want to I want to develop so I think that I played a flute completely different than I did two years ago mm -hmm. and than I did four years ago I was talking about Telemann yes and it's funny I made a recording with Telemann about five years ago mm -hmm. and then one about three years ago and now last year it's all different and it's completely different and I hope that I can stay like this that I can change myself that mm. I can change really also technical things how I think about the music so I want to be I want to stay changing for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and I think or I am sorry that so many musicians and colleagues of mine who found a way of playing 
They just keep repeating and doing the same because they want to keep their style. Ah. Mm. I agree that if you keep looking, sometimes you go in the wrong direction and maybe you go a step back. Right. But afterwards you do two steps front. Mm -hmm. So that's something I would really like to keep. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that message. And uh, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and once again, as Artistic uh, Director of the Kunjian Woodwind Festival, it's the very first year, so I wish you all the success and I hope it turns out to be uh, just a blast for everyone that actually visits. And uh, thank you once again for joining us here on Heart to Heart. Thank you very much for inviting me, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you.